Your shadow is not your enemy. I know that the lurking anger, the depression, the snakes of shame, all of that can feel like shit. But this is not some toxic positivity, look on the bright side kind of message that I'm bringing you today. This is a call to look straight into the darkness and see the wounded child there that is desperate for love, for understanding, for a space to be heard. And then to give them exactly what they didn't get way back when they needed it so much. Welcome back to Squeaky's Cauldron Lovelies, or welcome if this is your first time here. I'm your host, Sarah Evergreen. Thank you for coming to hang out in my weird, witchy corner of the internet. Today, it's all about shadow work. Yeah, juicy stuff, shadow work. And I think fairly misunderstood. We hear a lot about it in the spiritual and the self-help, self-growth communities, but what does shadow work actually mean and why is it so important? This is gonna be a two-part episode. I realize that there's a whole lot to cover that I want to kind of space it out a little bit so you can get a little bit of the theory and then a little bit of the practice. So this is the theory around shadow work and why it's important and the kinds of benefits that it can bring up as well as a few dangers that you might want to be aware of when you are moving into this practice. To start off with, the word shadow itself comes from Jungian psychology. He's described it as an unconscious aspect of the personality that does not correspond with the ego ideal. So basically, it's part of yourself that doesn't correspond with the story of yourself that you want to be true. So often the stories of ourselves that we want to be true are things that we've gathered from other people. Because for example, in childhood, if I behaved this way, then that meant that I got love. So being this kind of person must mean that that's good. And if I behaved this way, then I got shame or I got criticized. So being this kind of person must mean that that's bad. So I am this kind of person, even if this other aspect of yourself is a real integral part of you. Things like you talk too much, or you don't talk enough, or this could apply to things that you enjoy, or things that you don't enjoy, or the way that you enjoy things. If you're someone who gets very, very excited about something you love, that can threaten other people subconsciously, and that gets shame thrown on it. Or if you're someone who loves things in a very quiet and contemplative way, too, that can trigger other kinds of messages from people telling you, no, that's, you need to be more excited. Why aren't you more excited about things? The Wikipedia definition of shadow is a dark area where light from a light source is blocked by an opaque object. The opaque object is your ego ideal. The thing that's being blocked from the light, those are the pieces of your personality and yourself that you've broken off and put into boxes away from the way that you interact with the world. Now, the thing is that light that's shining, that light is love. And when you can move your ego ideal, your story of what you're supposed to be out of the way, then those pieces get that light on them. And they become things that we can integrate, things that you can draw power from and inspiration from, creativity from and peace from to move forward into a bigger, more beautiful expression of who you are. I'm curious. What does your shadow look like? What does it feel like? I think that it can be helpful to personify our shadows, especially in the beginning stages, just to give us a kind of thing to work with, to talk with, to negotiate with, and to start to heal. Mine looks like a very skinny version of myself at about 16, 17. And she's covered in dirt and muck and scraps of clothing. Her hair is a snarled rat's mess. And she, she does like these jerky 
movements and she cringes a lot. And I find her in sewers. <laughs> and yeah, so what does your shadow look like? Let me know in the comments. But why is shadow work so important? Why can't we just like keep these things in the dark and then just move on with our day? I mean, isn't a locked box perfectly fine for keeping all that stuff in? Well, no. What happens is, I'll, I'll give you an analogy. So if you take an animal, if you take a cat, for example, um, this is not a pleasant analogy, but it is effective. It is effective in getting my point across. So you take a cat and you put that cat in a cage. Okay, for a couple of days, the cat is kind of fine, okay, like antsy, starting to get upset about things, definitely. And then you put that cage in a basement. And this is what you're doing with the repressed parts of yourself. You've taken this thing, often subconsciously and 100% understandably, because as children, we need to feel safe. We need to feel like we are getting love and acceptance from the people in positions of authority. So we will do this naturally. It's not, that's not, doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you, but this is what happens. So you put this piece of yourself in the cage, like the cat, and then you put it in the basement so that you can forget about it and move on with your life. So you've got the cat in the basement, you give it enough food to keep it alive, you give it enough water to keep it alive, but that's it. No light, no contact, stuck in this little box. How long until that cat turns into a feral animal who is going to attack anyone who comes near it? Now, with your shadow, same thing happens. That piece of yourself turns into a feral animal because it wants to be heard. It needs to be heard and expressed. And eventually, it grows strong enough to break out of that box. Because unlike the cat, it doesn't need food. It can just expand because it's got all these other friends that you've put in the basement with it and they can team up together and they can figure out how to pick locks. They can figure out how to get out of the basement door and into your kitchen. And then you've got this monster snarling at you in your kitchen while you're just trying to have a conversation with your friend. And then suddenly something your friend says or a way that they look at you triggers one of these parts of yourself and that monster takes your place. Now, the thing is, that monster is still you. It's still pieces of you that have just been broken apart and disintegrated. And shadow work starts to bring all of that together. If you are enjoying this episode, please drop a like below. It really helps me out when you guys do that, both in terms of letting me know that you're out there and you're watching and enjoying things, and also it helps the channel grow. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please remember, hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications so you don't miss any future episodes. Aside from hopefully avoiding that monster in the kitchen, what are some of the things that shadow work can do for us? One huge one, is that it gives us an increased range of compassion. When we start to have compassion for those pieces of ourselves, when we start to offer those pieces love and to bring them back into the fold, our compassion for ourself grows. And when your compassion for yourself grows, your compassion for other people naturally grows as well. Being able to say, I love myself, I know that this fucked up thing is here and this uncomfortable thing is here and over here I've got this weird thing that's going on and I love all of it anyway allows you to look at another person and be like they've got this fucked up thing over here and this weird thing is going on and I love them anyway. I understand that they're human and flawed and still inherently beautiful and a child of God. Practicing shadow work will reduce your reactivity. So what you want to aim for is being able to respond to a situation instead of react to a situation. 
Responsiveness means that you've taken a moment to figure out what it is you actually want to say in the situation, what it is that will serve both your highest good and the highest good of the other person involved. Reactivity is the monster in the kitchen. Shadow work can also result in better physical health. One of the ways that these repressed parts of ourselves ask for recognition and attention is that they will manifest as physical health problems. So when you clear that up, when you bring everything back into integration, a lot of these health problems can ease or disappear completely. I've seen it in myself, I've seen it in others, I've read countless stories about it. This stuff is real. I'm not saying that it's a cure-all for everything, but I am saying that there is a connection. Your body, your emotional body, and your physical body are connected. Doing shadow work can also improve your creativity and give you lines of creativity that you may not have recognized as being something that you want to pursue or something that got put into the box that you were shamed for can now be unpacked and pursued in a way that really opens up your life. Like I had drawing packed away in one of my boxes because of when I was a kid, my brothers both drew and they drew fairly well. And I wrote, what would happen is like people would come over and my brothers would show them their drawings. And then I'd try to show people my writing and it, nobody cared. Um, it's very easy to flip through somebody's sketchbook and be like, Ooh, ah, but it takes a lot more time to sit down and read something. So why that didn't make it so that my writing was something that I repressed and then drawing was something that I leaned into probably came from the fact that I was trying to not emulate my brothers and be on my own. But that also meant that they were the artists. I was the writer. And so there was that disconnect. And since then, I've done Inktober, I've and drawn lots of things. Drawing was for. something that helped me get through the depression that I've mentioned in other videos. And yeah, it took that unpacking of it and being able to sit down and say, no, I am an artist. I may not be the best artist. I don't particularly care to be, but this is something that I do have at my disposal. Shadow work will also increase your access to magic. When we have these pieces of ourselves that we tuck away, that means that we don't have access to all of our energy. Things are being made smaller and that constriction will always have an effect on the flow of our energy. Think of it as a river. You've got this river running through you. What happens if you create a tributary? The river farther down is going to become smaller and that tributary, maybe it just leads into a swamp. If this is your shadow, where that energy is going, like, and that's how the shadow can grow is that it's still getting fed energy. It doesn't just wither off and die, no because it's part of us and it's still got access to that channel. When you can bring that tributary back to the main flow of energy, then you've got more of that rushing river, you've got the cleaner water, you've got all of that goodness. Plus, there are things in our shadows that often play on the taboo and on the global unconscious level, those taboo things have a lot of inherent energy because there is friction there. There is titillation there. And when you can tap into those aspects of yourself, oh my god, the magnetism. Ooh, chef's fucking kiss for sure. Like, if you look at, we'll use Dita Von Teese as an example alluring. Say what you will about her. She has this way of carrying herself that is crazy alluring. And I think a large part of that is because she leans into these taboo aspects. She's got the goth thing going on and she's got the sexy thing going on. 
And at the same time, she's got more of this kind of integrated wholeness to her. So she's got access to these really cool aspects of her personality that for many other people and possibly for her at some point in time become shadow parts. I know that for me, that's definitely something that I've gone through, particularly around sexuality and goth stuff. That's probably why I brought her up. <laughs> so learning to bring those things in and to appreciate them and to, to check in with the deliciousness of them. There's so much in your shadow that's going to be delicious as well as difficult and trying. Um, but getting access to those things is going to make you have so much more oomph in terms of your magic practices, your manifestation practices, even just existing in the world. Your level of charisma is going to go up. If this is something you want to focus on more intently, working with shadow, or if you're interested in going deeper with Hakate or just bringing magic into your life in a more intentional way that will help you move forward into a bigger, better, more beautiful expression of yourself, please check out my coaching offer in the show notes below and schedule a discovery call today. I would love to hear from you. I'm going to leave you with a bit of a, but wait, there's more about shadow work. So there are all these amazing things that come from shadow work, and I think that everyone can benefit from them. And I do want to say that this work can bring up a lot, and it can be very, very helpful, and for some people, absolutely necessary to have someone to be able to hold that space with you, whether that is a therapist, a coach, or a very trusted friend, you will know what level of holding you need. But having someone that you can talk to about what's going on and get a honest and compassionate reflection back from can help a lot because there might be traumas that get unearthed. There's definitely going to be emotions that come up and you don't want to deal with those all by yourself. Like sometimes we can't deal with those all by ourselves and it puts us back into a place that is not helpful and we want to be moving into more integrated holistic spaces not regressing into more contraction contraction is of course part of the natural cycle of things and is absolutely important and it's not a place we want to get stuck in on that note, I will be back soon with another video on shadow work, drilling into more specifics about certain types of practices that you can do to start exploring your shadow. Until then, check out this video on Hikate's key of acceptance for coming to terms with the things that we can't change, even when our shadow tells us that we can. Thank you so much, my lovelies. Take care of yourselves, and as always, use your voice.